Hello everyone. So we will start with mock one, the VRC section. Okay. So let's see how many questions are there in this particular VRC section. There are 30 questions. Okay. This is an RC question five. Uh, two RCs. Okay. So question 11, three RCs, I think 15, 16, four RCs. Okay. And 20 or 20 RC questions. Here is a parajumble, another parajumble, parajumble, five statement parajumble. This question will definitely leave because they are usually lengthy. It's odd man out, odd man out. And para summaries. Fine. So I usually follow an RC structure. So I'll go with the same. Okay. So when Ghislaine Maxwell arrived in New York in 1991, her life was in pieces. Yet within a few years, she was back on top, living in style on the Upper East Side and sitting at the very heart of New York society. She was a part of the generation of Britons who went on to America in the 1990s and 2000s in the search of fame and fortune. The invasion was driven by talent and ambition. Britons rose to the top of a striking number of journalistic and cultural institutions from the New Yorker through Vogue to the Metropolitan Museum. Anglophilia grease the entry of the British into the American establishment. Institutions such as the Council for Foreign Relations fostered it. A British accent was regarded as proof of intelligence and wit, okay? Some of the immigrants were genuinely talented, but Anglophilia lifted plenty of the flotsam and jetsam too, and allowed clever Brits to get away with things that Americans never could. Hitchens even lit a cigarette on television, leaving his interviewers speechless. The British invasion was further eased by the Atlantic Alliance, which was revived by Ronald Reagan and Margaret Thatcher and flourished through Tony Blair's relationship with Bill Clinton and George Bush. It was in part a convenient fiction for both sides, allowing America to claim that it was acting in something bigger than its own interests and pretend to believe that it, had, that it still had a seat at the top table. But it also had some substance to it. Particularly as globalization gathered pace, both countries embraced a distinctive model of finance-driven capitalism. Indeed, London was arguably a bigger financial center than New York. Okay, London's a bigger one. In recent years, Britain has lost some of its cash in America. The press regularly and the president occasionally portrays the country as poverty-stricken, crime-ridden dystopia. America's population is also becoming less Anglo-Saxon and more Hispanic and Asian. Students across the country are demanding the decolonization of the curriculum. Okay. The combination of Trump's election and Britain's decision to leave the European Union has also destroyed two of Britain's most important assets. Okay, The Trump user Atlantic Alliance has a way of beating up the EU rather than building an alliance of democracies. Brexit simultaneously deprived Britain of its position as a bridge between America and the EU and destroyed its reputation as a well-run country capable of calming American frequent temper tantrums. Okay, Britain still needs America, especially now that Brexit has divided Britain from Europe and China's clamped down on Hong Kong limits Asian operations. The more intriguing question is whether America needs Britain. It still has an appetite for British talent. It will also have much more use for the old Atlantic alliance where Mr. Trump loses the election as looks increasingly likely. Okay, this is a sort of an uncertain statement. Joe Biden's America will be in the business of rebuilding relationship across the board and despite having leaving the EU, Britain with its deep military, diplomatic and security relations with the US will be an important part of the process. Okay, America may also discover that they can profit from advice in an area the British know all too well, decline and stagnation. Okay, so Americans need the help of British somewhere. America bears more than a passing relevance to early 20th century Britain, which was also overtaken in one area after another by rising and much more disciplined Germany. The coming new feudalism, a new book by Joel Kotkin of Chapman University, describes a quite familiar, a world quite familiar to the British in which a hereditary ruling elite lord it over a compliant intelligentsia and an impoverished middle class. Britons may not have solved their problems, economic decline and new feudalism in their own country, but they have had plenty of time to reflect on them. And at the very least, they can warn Americans what will happen if they don't change course. A convenient fiction, as mentioned, para four. Okay, let's oh, directly move to para four. Okay. So one, two, three.
Yeah, here. Bill Clinton, British Invasion, Atlantic Alliance, Tony Blair. Okay, it was convenient fiction for both sides. Okay, this is what it says. Allowing Britain, America to claim it was acting in something over interest and British believing. Okay, let's see. Both countries have their vested interests behind the curtain of being generous. British invasion was... Okay, we are not talking about invasion. This is a wrong word. Okay, so we'll eliminate option B. Coming to C, the rosy relationship between America and Britain was not so rosy. Okay. Globalization led countries to act only in their interests. This is again a very broad topic while we're speaking about America and Britain specifically. So B and D are out. Between A and C, the more prudent option would be selecting the one which is talking about own interests. Okay. Because it is talking about America's interest and British interest and they both have best interest in what they are doing. Hence, we'll go with option A over here. Come to option B. How did Brexit affect? Okay. The point over here is affect. So, we have to look at the effect part of it. Let's quickly see. Britain can no longer act Okay, this is what Britain can't do. Okay, we need to look at the effect of things. Britain now cannot be considered as a peacemaker of America. Okay, now where is this part actually coming from? Let's have a look. Here, they were deprived of their position as well as the reputation of a country. Okay. The reputation was the effect that happened on Britain. Hence, we'll go with option B. But channels, no. Britons find it harder. Again, an irrelevant option. So let's we'll stick to B over here. Okay. I'll just erase this. Yeah. Britain's entry in America was helped with which of the following? Okay. The desire for British talent. Uh, I remember reading it somewhere over here. British accent, talent. Yeah, invasion was driven by talent and ambition, right? America's admiration, Atlantic Alliance has also been given a part. Invasion was further eased with the Atlantic Alliance. So, your Atlantic Alliance, we have talent. If two are matching, we go with all of the above as our option. Fourth one, decolonization of the curriculum. Now, decolonization of the curriculum was with respect to the Anglo Saxon, the Hispanic, and Asian students. Okay. Reduction of Britons in America. No, I need to address the curriculum. Less British history and English literature. Yeah, this is addressing curriculum. Addition of Asian history in the curriculum. Uh, it is talking about decolonization. That means we are talking about removal. Decolonization is removal. So this is talking about removal. Removal of British traces from American books. So American books is not necessarily studied by all students, right? It can be any American book. We need to talk about the curriculum in general. Hence, we will stick to B over here and move ahead. The, what is the passage primarily trying to suggest? The importance of Britain is reducing for America. No, it is not because it is still saying that it is important over here. So it is not. Britain's went to America to gain fame and glory, but that is not the case now. It's a very generic thing, which is not matching. Anglophilia is fading in America, okay, which is true. And D is also talking about the same, but British still have something to teach the Americans, which is mentioned over here in the last paragraph, that they can still profit from advice. So we will go with option D in this. Okay, RC2. The coronavirus pandemic and the responses to it have shown light on the fragility of the nation's food supply chains. A handful of the industrial scale facilities provide the US with most of its meat. Rising prices and nationwide shortages of beef, pork, and chicken have resulted from disruptions at only at only a few of these plants. Okay, so some plants have stopped the whole supply chain. News of shuttered meeting plants are driving an increased interest in hunting, fishing. Okay, many state live agencies would report brisk sales of fishing and hunting licenses. It is too early to tell if the uptick, uptick will persist, but if it does, it will one of the few positive outcomes of the coronavirus pandemic. As Aldo Leopoldo conservation, convers, conservationist warned about, there are two spiritual dangers in not owning a farm. One of the dangers of supposing their breakfast comes from the grocery and the other that heat comes from the furnace. Okay. Industry scale agriculture globalization have laid waste. 
two family farms where urbanization shifting views on ethics of hunting transhumans have all contributed to the decline of hunting many anti hunting advocates celebrate this trend but the decline like the loss of small scale family farming has not been without consequences okay hunting license fees taxes on gun ammunition account for 60% of funding wildlife agencies many of them already slashed their budgets and there are even deeper and more consequential problems stemming from the decline in hunters chief among this is the growing disconnect between humans and nat- natural world that sustains them it's the disconnect that lockdowns and social distancing may deepen as more people especially young will disappear in the mind numbing and attention span destroying black holes of social media hunting perhaps even more so than farming binds us to the land and to the natural and human communities that inhabit it to hunt and to hunt like farming on a human scale is to know and understand the land and its inhabitants and in turn the most human part of ourselves in his book hearts blood david peterson argues that hunt is on and should be a quietly quite deeply personal right an active sacrament that reconnects us to our humane roots and realigns us to the wild nature and our one and only home while the kind of hunting described by peterson contracts with the communal fox and peterson agree that hunting grounds us in and reminds us of what sustains us it is hunters best on who know the most about their prey and state of their environment always almost all pioneering conservationist were hunters it was the hunt that made them look closely at land and the game and moves through it over and over it the predator prey relationship brings with it a kind of intimacy that demands attention care and awe it is not an accident that an earliest art painted on cave walls more than 30000 years ago depicts animals that our ancestors fed on feared and revered if an increased interest in hunting especially among the next generation of hunters can be sustained to bring more women and men into the natural world and out of the virtual world of screens that dominate so many lives more hunters will not only mean more funds for conservation but more women and men who pay close attention even briefly to the natural world okay fine it's about uh coronavirus stopping meat and also about hunting and how it can help conservation of environment i do your poll statement here want there are two spiritual genders in not owning a farm okay he quotes because of which of the following what is the reason for the quote has been asked to me to enlighten everyone about the positives of owning a farm uh this talk about dangers how is it positives okay the shortage in the supply of meat yes this is a probable option increase in the interest in hunting and fishing why would that bring up the quote about owning farms to highlight the dangers of not owning a farm this is talking about spiritual dangers okay not about realistic dangers so the shortage of meat that is mentioned in para 1 and 2 according to me is bringing out the statement of the conservationist why has sudden interest in hunting and fishing increased suddenly because of the lockdown okay that is one thing but lockdown is more of a bigger reason than the smaller one mentioned because the increase in meat prices yeah the lockdown caused this okay and this is the more major reason but let's look at another option because people want to connect to nature during the lockdown uh well that has happened but we don't know if that will persist so we can't say this as a absolute statement because of lack of small farms delivering again a very generic thing the interest is because of the increase in meat prices okay have a look here news of shuttered meat packing plants yeah right that is causing a rise in meat prices that's why people are hunting to save money eighth one the author suggests that hunting and fishing should persist primarily for which of the following reason okay yeah hunting i remember reading it here it will increase the revenues for the system system is a very generic word you need to mention what system so i'll eliminate a hunting reminds us of what sustains us yes that is something important because here it says it reminds us of what sustains us for the people to be dependent on themselves for the basic necessity no it is more about looking at the environment which has been mentioned in the last paragraph to combat the effects of lockdown no it's a very short narrow perspective we need to look at the longer perspective hence we'll go with b hunting ground us in and reminds us of what sustains us okay this is last paragraph i remember yeah here sustain refers to what okay we are talking about 
hunting grounds and we are talking about sustainable so okay hunting ground is what it will be the land right it's talking about the land that is sustaining us it's very easy to get lost in such things it is not talking about the prey it is talking about the hunting ground hence i'll go with land instead of prey nature and animals in this particular question okay the 10th one why does the ancient art depict animals uh, where did we read that here cave walls yes intimacy demands care attention okay as animals were a significant part of nature as it shows a strong relationship between human and nature as it personifies a strong killer and killed relationship no definitely not animals were a significant part of nature no no it's not talking about animals and nature it is about our relationship with them so a is out c is out b is as it shows a strong relationship between human and nature okay no it should show the kind of intimacy that demands attention care respect okay so this is a good point but it is not covering the whole point that the para is saying hence i'll go with none of the above okay let's see this Germans consumed by tech envy of America allowed themselves a flush of pride when Wirecard won a place in the DAS index in eighteen. Stock market value surged above this. Here it seemed was a European fintech champion, a digital payment firm headed for global glory. Today faces a red again with embarrassment. It it has admitted a one point nine billion hole in accounts. Founder boss visionary quit on June nineteenth. Arrested, bailed on suspicion of false accounting and market manipulation. the firm faces bankruptcy or a fire sale why is gold rise is a case study of carnage possible when a firm's accounting goes awry but national regulators and big investors are so seduced by the company's narrative that they cannot or will not see it okay so this is about national regulators not seeing the wrong doings in a particular company based on its accounting it is also a reminder of how markets tend to benefit from short sellers okay it's a benefit of short sellers okay Who tried to make money betting against listed firms by selling borrowed shares and buying them back later at a lower price? Had the warnings from Cassandra's who detected a bad smell from Wirecard years ago heeded billions of dollars of losses could have been avoided? Question about the firm's accounting began to swirl in 2015. They have intensified in 18 months. Series of articles in the Financial Times informed by short sellers, whistleblowers. Instead of taking them seriously, German market regulators, Bafin, seem keener to shore up confidence in Wirecard and attack the attackers. Big banks invested back Wirecard kept faith in some cases, doubling down even as more and more red flags popped out. Many did scant due diligence instead of relying on puff pieces by sell side analysts right to the end. Half a dozen still had buy recommendations when Mr. Braun resigned. Its auditor E Y faces right. Scrutiny. German media for much has swallowed Wirecard's line that it was the victim of a nefarious plot by Anglo-Saxon marauders. Okay, when so many why when so many people can get it wrong, anything that injects skepticism is welcome. Such counterweights to market consensus, especially help when politicians, central banks are booterish, boosterish on asset prices as they are now, and in countries with a corporatist mindset. Those who bet against companies had long had the suspicion sought selling bans. Date back to 17th century Amsterdam, but claims that shorting causes instability do not hold water. Okay, financial graphics are more often caused by investors borrowing to go long, not short. Sometimes short sellers are up to no good, as when they engage in speculative naked shorting, placing bets without first borrowing short. More often than not, though, they are onto something. Over the past year, they have uncovered several frauds. Shorting does more than root out funny business; it also helps sharpen price discovery when legitimate firms are overvalued. Short sellers tend to do the homework because they have a lot at stake. Okay, stock price can rise by more than they fall. Shorts can bleed. Money for target shares remain buoyant for years. It may legal writs and illegal tactics. Wirecard is suspected of ordering cyber attacks on its critics. More is the pity then. 
that as protectionism mounts, governments are being more tempted to cut up to homegrown corporate stars. Typically, frauds have a global element, whether trade war, manufacturing of fracturing of global regulation make it harder for skeptics to work their magic. More Chinese firms may eventually shift from shift their main listing from New York to China, where short selling is less tolerated. Okay. Professional naysayers will never be popular profiting as they do from the misery of others. But if they cannot keep markets honest, nobody wins. Very interesting, RC. Let's see the question. Which of the following cannot be inferred from the passage? German government was blinded by this. Okay. Yeah, we can say so. Right. It is clearly uh, mentioned over here. The warnings were unheeded. Okay. German market regulators were boosting it, etc. Big banks and etc. were boosting it. Right. So market regulators can be the Germans, German government. Right. So that's why. I can infer this. German market regulator did not listen to informers about the frauds. Yes, here, Waffen seemed keener to show up confidence, attack the attackers. I can infer this. Cooperative mindset countries tend to undercount the threat from skeptics. Okay. Yeah, here. Skepticism is welcome. Okay, such countervision markets are especially helpful in politicians, central and bootish and asset prices. So skepticism is welcome in a cooperative mindset. Okay. But since they're undercounting it, that is why we are using the statement that they are welcome. Hence, I eliminate C. The only thing left is D. Once ABC is eliminated, I will not really go and look into D to conserve time. I will mark D and move ahead. Question 12. Which of the following best summarizes the passage? Why that kind of shows the need for more skeptics. Oh, okay. I mean, skeptics was a very small point uh, discovered in this, uh, I mean, uh, mentioned in this paragraph. So I can't really comment on that as an answer, but let's go ahead. We can keep it. Benefits of short sellers. Right here, there is a lot of say about short selling. Okay. Short sellers do their homework. They have a lot at stake. Okay. And short selling going bad. Shorting causing instability does not hold water. Okay, there is argument regarding this. So B can be a possible option. Government should not ignore skeptics. Again, A and D are very narrow in the perspective of the whole passage. Short selling may be bad at times, but it can open up fraudsters. It can open up fraudsters is a very vast and absolute statement while they have only said that they have uncovered several big frauds. Doesn't mean we can make a generic statement of it. Hence, we'll stick to B in this case. Short sellers seem to be more active in trade practices. Uh, here, they do their homework because they have a lot at stake. So let's see what matches. They are aware of which groups of institutions of fraud uh, know. They lose heavily when things do not go in their favor. Yes, they have a lot at stake, so they can lose a lot. Let's keep this. They want to gain arbitrage by selling big and buying less. We don't know the word arbitrage from the passage. They bet against the market trends. Uh, no, the reason is they seem to be more active. We need to answer the question why. The why is answered by B and not D, hence B. The author mentions all benefits of short selling except they have to determine correct value of a share. Yes, it sharpens price discovery when less than values are overvalued. They can help to bring scandals to the light. Uh, yes, that has been mentioned over here. Uncovered several big frauds. They tend to act as whistleblowers when market pursues capitalism. Yes, this too has been mentioned in this very paragraph. So hence, we'll go with no none of the above. The author suggesting which of the following through the last sentence. But if they cannot keep markets honest, nobody wins. Whatever tactics the country may offer, ingenuity against traders may not benefit them. Okay. Short selling is important to uncover frauds. Yes, that has been said because it keeps markets honest. Excess leverage may have a counter impact on a country itself. Okay.
right like here the chinese firms are keeping excess leverage to themselves okay so which can have a counter effect which is mentioned by the whole tone of the last paragraph as a whole so if i can find b and c i will not waste my time checking a i will mark all of the above and move ahead okay this another rc but uh, given that i have only 14 minutes i will preferably go to va okay given this mock is a pretty long one so let's start with va first because and then if we have time we'll go to the rc though tax credits for low income single mothers provide support and contribute to the development there are still signs of poverty among working people malnourishment poor health and substance abuse in much of the world there is concern of abysmal wages for less advantaged and the many victims of racial gender and discrimination less appreciated is that many low wage workers often must pass a meaningful work because it pays too little and without a good job these workers cannot have a good life such outcomes particularly in advanced economy grim signs that there is something wrong the problem is not equality but high degree of injustice okay now two is what we call a very general statement right compared to so it says much of the world there's concern over abysmal wages right three talks about low wage workers so this is a general and this is a expansion on the general point this is talking about low income single mothers so two definitely comes before th uh, one and three okay and four is talking about such outcomes so this such outcome must be given somewhere in this whole paragraph okay so we need to search for the same now what we can see is that two makes a very good starting statement in much of the world there is concern of abysmal wages the less advantage and the many victims of racial and gender discrimination okay though tax credits for low income single mothers single mother gender discrimination support and contribute to the development of the children there are still signs of poverty among working people malnutrition poor health and substance abuse less appreciated is that many low wage workers must often pass up meaningful work because they pay so little and without a good job these workers cannot have the good life now guys see good life outcome okay so this is a mandatory pair okay which is being formed 3 4 Now, what makes sense? One before three, because two is a starting statement. So it is either two, three, four, one, or it is two, one, three, four. Now, there is gender discrimination is being directly continued in this statement, okay? And it is not there in three and four. Hence, two one makes a mandatory pair, and three one is a mandatory pair, and we know two is a starting statement. Hence, we will go with two one three four. Two, one, three, and four. Okay, because America is still more powerful economically, militarily than its two leading competitors, its elections are always globally significant. In less than three months, United States will hold its fifty-nine presidential election. Okay, this is talking about elections. This is telling me about the election. Okay, so in terms of subject and its follow-up, this is. a subject right so one will always come after two okay because it is expanding on the election so it'll be two one so now that we know it is two one so two one is one pair okay unlike in jules one around the world in 80 days the modern world's journey over the next 80 days will be more of a slog than an adventure but it will culminate in an event of global and historic consequence yeah look at this world journey you know culminate in a event of global and historic consequence why 80 days ka description done it is answered here in less than 3 months right so that's why 3 4 is a pair and it comes for 2 1 hence we stick with 3 4 2 1 in this particular paragraph 3 4 the given sentences okay again a paragraph but inside but is a contrast okay so contrast was there is always something before a contrast okay 
the old school building in Perth, America has seen better days. Okay, this seems like a starting statement. Once a place where children of the tiny Colombian hamlet. Okay, old school building. Once a place. Okay, this looks more like an expansion. Old school building in Ponte America has seen better days. Once a place with where the children of the tiny Colombian hamlet would come to learn their lessons. Today it looks like little more than an abandoned ruin. Okay, so two and four is definitely a pair. There are names written on the flimsy wall. Okay. It's talking about a wall and one talks about a wall. But inside its, its wall tell a different story. There are names written on the flimsy wall by some Mambobi, Pakistan, others wrote prayers to Almighty while some went critical of the American and hoped to reach there safely. Okay. So I found two and four as my mandatory pair. Okay. Three talks about a wall, a uh, one talks about a wall, and three is expanding on it. That's why two, four, one, and three. Remember, I told contrast. So one is a contrast for abandoned ruin. Okay. So I'll stick with two, four, one, and three. Okay, this is a five statement para So I'll skip this and it also looks long. Okay, this is odd man out. Uh, I'll solve the para summaries before all my notes. 28, yeah. Dementia is an umbrella term for a range of conditions with a variety of causes, of which the most common is Alzheimer's disease, accounting for 60-80% cases. It usually serves a forgetfulness and a mild loss of cognitive functioning, but as it advances, people lose the ability to look after themselves. Many require round-the-clock care long before they die. Okay. It does not just affect the elderly, but there are much but they are much more likely to have it and life expectancy globally has climbed from not much more than 30 a century ago to over 70 now over 18 rich countries. By so 1.7 or 65 to 69 euros on dementia and the risk of developing it doubles every five years after that. At present, 50 million people around the world have the condition and now expected to rise to 82 million. Most of these new cases are in the developing world. Populations are rising and aging. Okay. Dementia is budding across the world and as the age of a person, it is the chance of it happening doubles. Okay. Dementia encompasses a large number of conditions and is sprouting across the world. So first part is talking about conditions. Next part is talking about population and aging. Okay. So this only talks about the world and aging, but not of the conditions. Okay. So A is a little weaker compared to B. Okay. The risk of dementia increases as age increases and requires constant look after the parent, patient. Elderly are much likely to develop the ever-growing disease which encompasses a large number of diseases. It doesn't encompass large number of diseases, it encompasses conditions. So I'll eliminate D. I have eliminated A. Risk of dementia increases as age increases. Okay. And requires constant look after patient. No, it is not combining both points. I need conditions and the world point, which is only B. Okay. So logically, B makes more sense. China has never renounced what it says. What it says is its right to reunify Taiwan by force if peaceful means are thwarted. So armies on both sides have to prepare for war, however remote it may seem. Of late, the number of naval exercises China has conducted has caused alarm. All the more so at a time of worsening relations between China and America on a number of fronts, including American policy towards Taiwan. The delicate status quo in which China insists Taiwan is part of its territory, but the island functions as an independent country is free. As the Global Times, a tough thumping official Chinese tabloid puts it, the possibility of peaceful reunification is decreasing sharply. Mercifully, that does not mean war is imminent. Okay, so war is not imminent. China is heading towards integrating Taiwan with itself by hook or crook. Okay, China's war game is increasing uncertainty in Taiwan. Okay, the war between the mainland China and Taiwan may not be near sight, but its possibility is increasing off late. Yeah, war is not imminent, remote. So yes, it is not a near sight, but possibility is increasing. Okay. The unraveling of relations between United States and China has deteriorated the current condition in China as well as Taiwan. No, this is very narrow. So D is out. Okay. China's war came with increasing uncertainty in Taiwan. So 
so there is no war game okay naval exercises is not necessarily a war game so b is out coming to a and c c is talking about a war is not a near sight which is a point reiterated twice in the passage so it is a stronger thing compared to a so i will go with c Well, Roberto, whoever the director general of the WTO departs on August thirty first, he will leave an institution in a wretched state. The W one sixty four members could not agree even on an interim successor. Is going a year early and will take a job at Pepsi, a drinks manufacturer. Only one global trade negotiation is completed in twenty five years. America, fierce critic of the WTO under Donald Trump, has blocked the appointment of judges to the organization's appeals body, hobbling its dispute settlement system. And now, Mr. Trump's trade representative, Robert Light. Heiser has fired another salvo. In a recent article, what he claims that the WTO's core principle is being undermined. Okay, WTO has not served its purpose, and the director general has been a failure. This is a very strong statement. Okay, we know something about it, but we cannot tell it has been a total failure. Okay. The report has exists WTO in a hobbled state where neither it has achieved anything much in the past and nor the future looks bright. Future is not looking bright. There is no interim successor. Not achieved in the past. Not, only one negotiation in twenty five years. He is leaving in a hobbled state, wretched state. Three points are being covered. B might be the answer. America has been a critic of WTO, which has not achieved anything in the last quarter century. Again, very narrower statement. It's not. It's covering one point, but B covers three points, so B is still the stronger answer. Departs in a worsening climate for the international trade, where the future success of the organization still remains to be decided. International trade? No, it is for WTO. Okay, it is it, the institution is in a wretched state, not international trade. Like I cannot comment on it. Is what I'm saying. So B covers three points. I'll stick to B. Okay, 26 is an odd one, right? Yeah, let's see. One by one, Trump's female advisers sang his praises and reflected on the pussy grabber in the chief's gender-blind leadership. What's the collective noun for a group of racist white women? I'm not sure, but I think it might be Republican Na National Convention. Everyone looked there were women, and most of them looked exactly the same. Some long bottle blonde hair, some makeup, some cold dead look in the eyes. Nobody can accuse a four-day horror show, which wound up on Thursday of skimping on female fee speakers. Swipe carefully, Democratic Party security officials warned campaign staffers this week. What's the collective noun for a group of racist white women? I'm not sure, but I think it might be a Republican National Convention. Nobody can accuse the four-day horror show, which wound up on Thursday of skimping on female speakers. Skimping on female speakers, one by one, Trump's female advisor sang his praises and reflected on the pussy grabber in the in chief's gender-blind leadership. Okay, so see, two is talking about Republican National Convention. Three is talking about everywhere you looked in the convention, there were women. So two and three are related. Okay. Nobody can accuse of the horror show because one by one they all sang praises of him and his gender blind leadership. Okay. Five Democratic security officials want campaign staffers. Doesn't make sense. We are not talking about a particular campaign. We are talking about a national convention. Okay, and Democratic. We are talking about Republican and. Racist women, which is there, with which are common points in one, two, three, four, and not five. Hence, I'll go with five. Okay, twenty seventh. Okay, uh, five is a proper noun. Start with five. Ecuador is among the countries hardest hit by COVID nineteen, staggering death. Blah blah blah. Okay. Okay, it's talking about chaos. Amid this chaos, the September deadline is fast approaching for the government able to restructure debt owed to international creditors. Okay, securing IMF is a condition of this restructuring, restructuring, restructuring. So five, two, and four are definitely a part. Okay, in a word, austerity in Ecuador has become a vector for the health, economic, social, COVID nineteen. IMF has the influence and responsibility to end it. Okay, IMF, IMF. 
Okay, a bit of problem that I have a restructuring agreement is that it depends on Ecuador securing increased financial support, extended fund facility. Okay. 